So we will move on now to Chiesa versus War Luque. Oh, I what mean, a surprise. You gave yourself Vicente Luque to, what to a talk about. My fucking boy, <laughs> War Luque. He said at the start of the podcast, his favorite fighter. And I thought he was going into this fight from the start. No, no. I mean, the reason why uh, Zabit Magomed Sharapov is one of my favorite fighters is because he came in and he was one of the first guys that seem- seamlessly blended grappling with striking and then striking with grappling, right? Like backwards and forwards, up and down. It was just seamless. Some of the trips and unorthodox movements were just fantastic. Um, so yeah, Michael Chiesa versus my second favorite fighter, War Luke. Um, I actually think this fight is really interesting. Like quite obviously it's a striker versus a grappler, right? We know that Chiesa wants to take it to the mat. He wants to try and choke you. And War Luke will happily stand and bang for as uh, 10 rounds if you fancy it. Um, I think that Luke gets some, sometimes uh, people think he relies on his chin too much, right? Because he gets in wars. Now that's evident if you look at the Wonder Boy fight, right? He just walked down Wonder Boy and just got fucking head kicked over and over and over again. Um, but in other fights, you can see that he actually can box. He actually can strike. But the 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 underrated part of Luke's game is actually his grappling, right? He's a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Um, well able to ha- handle himself on the ground. I think this is a really tough fight for Kiesa. Kiesa obviously has a wrestling background, which is cool. Purple belt in jiu-jitsu or brown belt maybe at this point. I'm not sure. Uh, and obviously his move up to 170, I think has been really, really good for his game. However, Kiesa's never been a striker and he's never been one to strike going backwards either, right? So how are you going to push Luke back is my question. So this, going to be- this was my point around this fight. The way Michael Kiesa sets up takedowns is with a long right hand mm-hmm. or a looping hook into a single leg. If you're fighting Luke, who's got power, who can strike, who isn't just a brawler, who can box, you're setting a lot of risks for yourself to get caught with something. Mm -hmm. And I think Kiesa has the ability to be the spoiler, to get in on a leg, to kind of hold him against the cage, be a bit of a spoiler. However, I think there's a lot of risk in getting to that position. You're going to get cracked. And Luke has such a bigger advantage on the feet at that point. So my thoughts... On, on this are Kiesa, okay, it can't be as extended as, as my example, but for me, Kiesa should try to emulate Jan Blachowicz versus Israel Adesanya. Bait Luke for the first round into purely a striking matchup. Don't even think about shooting the takedown, right? You're going to have to walk through the fire, right? Kiesa said this himself. You're going to have to walk through the fire. But if you can make Luke believe that this is just a striking match, and then you throw a double leg at him when he least expect it. That then it gets interesting, right? Mm-hmm. We've not seen Luke on the ground in a long time with a really good grappler, and I'm really interested to see how Kiesa tries to navigate this fight tactically. Because if you just try and stand with him, it's going to be a long night. If you use your usual setups for takedowns, it's going to be a long night. You know. I, you know, I, I said we wouldn't talk about him, but I kind of have to for this. If 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 Kiesa manages to get Luke to the cage and manages to grapple, McGregor elbows are always there, right? And from then, what happens? Everyone, everyone bails on the shot. Everyone, everyone moves to a single leg, or everyone just bails completely, right? So, yeah, I uh, my pick for this is Luke. But Robbie, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, it's turning into sort of a classic striker grappler matchup, which, you know, there's a few bits to consider, but I don't think, um, I don't think Michael's got the takedown percentage again to be guaranteed of just being able to do it. He is going to have to do something tricky. I like your idea about a strategy of waiting for the takedown. Uh, I don't know if that's exactly what he's going to employ, but he's going to have to, there's going to have to be some trickery for Michael Chiesa to nail this one, to be honest, um, because otherwise Luke is going to fucking hammer him. <laughs> I don't know how long it's going to take, but it, it, it'll happen. Yeah. I, don't know. I was about to give my pick, but you don't want that yet, so we'll hold off. Ian? Uh, yeah, I think I have to agree with you, Harry, in saying that this is like a fantastic tactical bout, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what both guys can bring to the table here. I mean, 
like when you're talking about Chiesa, what he's going to have to do. And I think that this fight will be a battle of the front foot, Mm -hmm. as in whoever's moving forward is probably going to be winning the fight. So that Chiesa is going to be wanting to back Luke up and get him up against the cage so he can snatch that leg. Another tactic that Chiesa could use is he could try lure lure Luke into throwing wild shots as well and just drop down in under him for a double leg. He uh, that, But that's easier said than done. I think I think if Chiesa was going to get Luke down to the mat, it would be up against the cage rather than in the middle of the cage because Agreed. Luke is very explosive, has a very good sprawl as well. And you don't want to be trying to take somebody down in the middle of the cage when he's sprawling on top of you because you know when Luke is getting back up, he's going to be unleashing the depths of hell on any of his opponents. Mm-hmm. Because you, he doesn't want anybody to be shooting on him. You like when you're shooting on somebody, you have to make a count. You have to make it stick. And when you're defending a takedown, you have to make that person pay for wanting to take that fight down if he doesn't get there. Um, with Luke, I mean, uh, it's it's a tough fight for him. I mean, because he's going to be in a, when he's his leg, he's he's kicking game. He's going to have to be very careful going to the body, going to the head. He doesn't want to get his legs caught and taken down that way I think he might try to rely on and I think it's going to be a common dom- dominator in all the fights that we're talking about here guys is the, is the introduction of calf kicks into the sport of MMA I mean th- they're game changers and if Luke can get off a couple of those I mean that 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 will cause all kinds of trouble for Chiesa here but um, it's a really interesting technical fight it's clash of styles uh, I always love watching those kind of fights to see what tactics the fighters bring in you know it may not be a beautiful watch for the casuals I think if Chiesa can 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 get his game plan down it will be to 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 double leg get Luke down to the mat and land some some ground and pound and half guard and go for the rear naked choke um when I come to my fight pick I would probably say that the likely outcome is that Chiesa might be able to get Luke back up against the cage and take him down and maybe irk out a decision. Harry is not impressed. <laughs> you know, well, the, the thing I'd say about the calf kicks, though, is that those calf, calf kicks have really exploded in MMA because of the development of boxing skills and the trend towards slightly longer, more bladed stances uh, as a result. Does that fit? Kiesa's striking style much? I, I have to wonder if that's going to be a very effective Not really, technique but he in this will, case. He will throw out he he'll throw out he he'll throw out his jabs and he is going to be get like when you're a grappler and you're fighting an explosive striker, I mean you know, if you want the fight to get to the mat, you're going to be encouraged to just throw a couple of wild shots as well. Like, you know, so if, if Luke can counter those wild shots, you see it with lots of wrestlers, like they can they throw these big, wild, mad spinning shit because they don't care if they end up on their back because they probably have the confidence that they'll be able to sweep and then get the fight that, to where they wanted. You know, I, I the reason why I would pick Chiesa to, to dominate Luque because he's done it against the likes of Rafael Dos Anjos. He's done it against the likes of, who wouldn't wouldn't be a great one, but Neil Magny, who would be known for his grappling expertise. He dominated him with quite easy quite easily too so i mean i'm not disregarding luke's ground game at all he's a black belt i don't see him getting submitted here but i do believe that raw wrestling ability the advantage has to go from to michael casey in this fight and he just has a that's his way of winning fights and it's very hard to stop i think uh, harry's kind of heartbroken so i'll, I'll, got, say, he wants, I'll, tell, I'll give him my pick off. I'll give my pick while he's upset. Go on. For the second time, <laughs> my profound insight, which I thought I had alone, has been spoiled by Ian because I also am going for Michael Chiesa. I think he is a big, strong wrestler who is going to play spoiler, is going to kind of smother Luke, probably get him to the ground one or two times, strong on top. There's going to be no submission. There's going to be no threat of submission. It's going to be grind out a win, progress with your career. He's got a huge frame. He is a re- How he ever made 155 is beyond me because he's That's a true. big, yeah, big he's guy. Big guy. Well, you know what? I will pick Michael Chiesa because <laughs> I want to hear, I want to see if I can actually hear Harry's screams of grief from Brighton to London. I want to see if that the sound carries that far. Well, for anyone that's made it this far into the podcast, <laughs> just understand 
that <laughs> next month's podcast is just going to be me on my own. <laughs> <laughs> my okay, so so my unbiased opinion here. I'm still going to pick Luke, but my the reason why I'm going to pick Luke is because I don't think that the options or the, the the comparisons that you just gave, Ian, like RDA loves the fucking wrestler, right? It's just shit at wrestling. You know what I mean? Neil Magny is, is a great example because he's a really well-rounded fighter, but Neil Magny also prefers to strike, right? He'll grapple if he has to, don't get me wrong, and he's a good grappler. He likes to mix it up. However, I feel as though Magny's, a lot of Magny's game is based on striking. Maybe somebody can correct me. My thoughts on Luke, though, are that I don't know how much fire Kiesa is going to walk through or going to have to walk through and whether that, I think it comes down to whether he, he's successful in the first couple of attempts to takedowns, right? If Luke can stuff those takedowns well enough, boy, it's going to be tough, right? Like we kind of saw it with Corey Sanghagen and TJ Dillashaw. Like TJ tried 19 takedowns and hit two. And both of those were one flying knee, one spinning wheel kick, right? But we know that TJ is not going to deviate away from the game plan. I wonder what happens when Kiesa walks through the level of fire that Luke is going to attempt to put on him. Will we see the same thing? Does he have the same gas tank to shoot the same explosive shots that he has? If he does and he gets him against the cage and he can wear him down, boy, Luke is in a lot of trouble, right? Because as you say, he's a very, very dominant grappler. Um, but I just feel as though Luke will be able to keep his back off the fence long enough. I don't know how. So my thoughts on the on, on throwing wild shots, right? And ducking under wild shots and shooting. Surely Luke knows that, right? So if Luke fights with straight shots rather than looping shots, the ability to shoot on that is much more difficult. And we know that Kiesa is difficult, it is is tough to fight when he's moving forward. And Luke is a man that will almost certainly press you forward. So, so I'm going to pick Luke by decision and fuck the three of you. Um, <laughs> the fact that it's in a bigger cage will certainly suit Luke a lot more than sure. what it, it will suit, suit Chiesa here. And I mean, what Harry said is completely right. I, Vicente Luke is way more of a durable fighter than what Michael Chiesa is. So if he can weather the storm and kind of dishearten Kiesa coming into the third round, it should like this fight is going to have spells of excitement when both fighters are on the feet and Luke is trying to land that damage. And then we're going to come into a period of the fight where, you know, Kiesa is going to try and initiate the, the clinch to try and get the fight down to the ground, which might not be as exciting, but that's the beautiful tactics of mixed martial arts. 